Hey, all right, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from MrExcel.com. We'll have Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. Great question today sent in by YouTube. It'll be interesting to see how many different answers we come up with here. Uh, Kareen BO3 has survey data. He has dates, sector, and the answer. Wants to count how many times each answer appeared. One, two, three, four, five. Well, that's easy. That's count if, but wants to be able to filter, filter it to a certain sector or to a certain date. So I'm going to do this with a pivot table. We'll choose one cell in the data. Go to insert, choose pivot table, and I'm not going to allow it to appear on its own worksheet. I'm going to put it out here on the right hand side. We'll just put it out here in uh, column F so we can see the, the original data. Now, as I think about this, I want answers going across the top and dates going down the left hand side. Also, we want to be able to filter this by sector. So I'm going to put the sector up in the report filter section, and then we have to put something in some values. I want to choose something that is text because text is going to force it to count. So I'm going to take the sector and put that in some values. And now if I scroll over, you're going to see that for each answer, we have the number of times that it appeared on a single day. A couple of things I want to do here. First thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that grand total on the right hand side. So we go into options and under display, I'm going to and under totals and filters, I'm going to turn off grand total for rows. That'll get rid of the grand total column. All right, that's good. I also want to make sure that we fill in the blank cells with zero. So I should have done that when we were back in there under options, layout and format for empty cells, show zero, click OK. And now I have daily dates going down the left hand side. That's not what I want. I want to group those up. So I choose the first one, choose group field and say that I want to do that by months and years. Click OK. And we now have data by month. Now, the other thing we want to be able to do is look for a specific sector by putting the data up here in the report filter section. I can open this up and see one specific sector, sector one. Now, if in fact we had wanted to just filter to a specific month, I could, now that this is grouped, take years and date up and add that to the filter as well. Now it'd be easy enough for me to come in and say, all right, I'm looking for 2008. I'm looking for just February and we're good to go. We get to see how many times each item appeared. You know, frankly, I would want to see the percentage of total. Uh, so I'm going to do one more thing, even though it wasn't in the original question, I'm going to go into field settings and show values as a percentage of the row. Click OK. All right, now we get to see for each answer how many times it appeared. So that's the pivot table solution. Allows you to go through and look up uh, data for one specific sector, one specific month, uh, and get those answers. We'll see what Mike comes up with here. Send it over, Mike. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, I have my data set here. And I had to make a little table because I'm going to use a formula, even though if I wanted to do it the fast way, I'd do it the way Mr. Excel did. But sometimes you do want to use a formula. Now, I built this uh, table. I have a begin date and a column and an end date. And in essence, I did that so that I could build a formula and then change these so I could have a uh, month or week or quarter. Uh, so we're having two criteria here for date. Then we have the actual criteria for the question, and we have our fourth criteria up here, sector. So one, two, three, four criteria have to be considered for our count here. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and start to build uh, the formula. Now, I'm going to use count ifs with an S. That is a function that's only in Excel 2007. And uh, don't worry if you don't have Excel 2007, 2010 is coming out in six months. Uh, and both of them have some great features. So you should get out there and get the new version. Uh, so here's count ifs equals count ifs. Oops, I didn't use my S. Count ifs. Now, four criteria, four ranges. I'm going to start out with criteria range one and criteria. So that's all it needs for each one is the range and the criteria. Click in the top cell for date, control shift down arrow to jump to the end, and then F4 to lock it. Comma, 
And our criteria is going to be our begin date. So in double quotes, I'm going to say greater than or equal to end double quote and then ampersand. And I'm clicking on the begin date. Now, I got to think about this. Cell references. So when I copy it down, I want this begin date to move. But when I copy it over to this column, I need a lock there. So I'm going to hit the F4 key three times to lock the column reference. Now watch this. I'm going to highlight this whole thing right here, copy comma, and then Control-V. Now, that's the same I just did, but watch this. I can double click that and click there, and then hit F4 to lock it, column but not the row. And I'm going to change this to less than or equal to, because we got to check that same date range, but less than or equal to that. That will give us the uh, difference between the two. Any Anytime we get a true here and a true here, it'll be in this particular time period. Now, the screen tip is very polite. Uh, we have our criteria too, so we put comma, and sure enough, the next criteria, range, and criteria three come up. Now let's go ahead and do this one. So I scroll over, get my answer, control shift down arrow on F4, comma, and we don't need any double quotes here, we just need to click right there. Ah, but we need to lock it, because when we copy the formula down, it needs to be locked there, but when we move it over, it needs to move to that too, so what do I do? F4, F4, row reference lock. Comma, finally, I need the, th the fourth range, which is this one. Comma to get to our criteria. And this one is going to be locked in all directions, because we need that. That's like the uh, report or page filter for pivot table. So I hit F4 and close parentheses. Control Enter to put that formula in the cell. Ooh, I have the, I'm going to put the, um, month here. I had the uh, quarter there. Now, I'm going to copy this down, let go, and then grab that fill handle again and copy it over. And just like that, you know, when I'm doing big formulas like this, I always like to check. I'm going to come to the diagonally furthest one away and hit my F2 key, edit. Sure enough, the green one is there, the two dates one in there. Oh, that is just great cell reference uh, formula work there. Um, so there it is. Uh, gets us what we want. And the main uh, point here is we can change this. I'm going to change this to 3. I get my quarter results. I could easily change uh, sector 4, sector 5, and instantly the whole table updates. I'll change this back to 1. Now, that's one option. If you didn't have 2007, then you could use a, a sum products formula like this. Now, the only difference is we still have to have our range of values and our criteria, but we're comparing it directly inside of parentheses, double negatives to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. And then there's the four criteria and ranges. Still, another option, if we come over to this tab right here, if you have criteria January, February, March, how in the world do you compare text to this date range over here, which are serial numbers? Well, then you could use the text function. Now, the text function is great because it will convert that whole range to whatever format. That's a custom no number format that converts all those serial dates to MMM, which gives us three uh, letter text abbreviations for that uh, month. Now, you cannot use this with uh, count ifs because this text function converts that whole range to an array, and so you have to use some product. Some product can handle arrays. Still another great option. If you really only want one particular uh, set of criteria at, at a time instead of a whole table, all of the months, all of the uh, number questions, you could use the database function dcount. And all it requires is you put the field names exactly exactly as they are over in that table and the criteria. And watch this. Total simple formula. Your database is the whole database. Your field is the actual field name. I put answer. Uh, and then the criteria is this right here. The only problem with dcount and dbase uh, functions is they're hard to build huge tables of formula results. All right. Uh, We'll see you next trick. Hey, all right, Mike. Thanks. That's a great technique. Boy, you can tell that I have the advantage by getting to go first. I took the easy way out with the pivot table, but uh, great formula there. Hey, next week, I'm going to be on the road to my annual trip to Laguna Beach. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be recording some podcasts ahead. 
where we take a look at the new features in Excel 2010. So if you haven't upgraded yet to 2007 or you're thinking about upgrading to 2010, watch next week. Where we'll go through a lot of cool features for Excel 2010. And we'll be back with uh, more Excel tips the week after that. Well, thank you for stopping by. On behalf of Mike and myself, we'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast.